I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Supervisor Ty Rosberg is what joined us. Yes. He Can you hear us, Ty? Everything good? All right. Thanks for joining in. Everybody's had a chance to look over the agenda. There is no conflicts of interest, correct? I'll consider that approved. Madam Auditor, will you read the uh, previous minutes of our last meeting, please? Yes. On July 9, 2024, the Board of Supervisors met at 9 a.m. with Gene Hyden, Gene Hyden, Chair Presiding, Members President Schultz, Dozar, Hyden, Mulbauer, and Rossberg. Minutes of the previous meeting were read and approved. On motion, the board recognized claims for public health and approved claims for all other departments. Uh, the board approved the recorder's quarterly report for April 24 through June of 24. The board approved the hiring of Richard Nelson, part-time maintenance employee one, engineer's office. A motion was made by Schultz, seconded by Mulbauer, to approve the bargaining unit administrative employee wage rates effective June 21, 2024. Motion passed unanimously. A motion was made by Mulbauer, seconded by Rossberg, to approve the purchase of 10,000 ton of maintenance gravel from Hallett Materials Wall Lake Pit, price of $9 per ton. Motion passed unanimously. The board discussed with Jacob Langholz, IT director, the mini split for the IT room at the city center, estimate $9,750. Uh, no action was taken at this time. Nathaniel Piscina from ClearGov spoke to the board about services they offer for budgets, better planning, and simplifying. A motion was made by Schultz, seconded by Rossberg, to for the approval and disallow of the 2023-2024 Disabled Veterans Homestead and Military Credit applications. Motion passed unanimously. The board discussed a generator to power the city center. No action was taken at this time. The board discussed sick leave accrual. No action was taken at this time. The board discussed the secondary roads clothing allowance. No action was taken at this time. On motion, duly seconded, the board adjourned. 11.57 a.m. Agenda for the next meeting are posted and available at the courthouse on Friday, 4.30 p.m. Any corrections to the um, supervisors reports we'll go ahead uh and start with you Dave it looks so, like you got yeah up. I did I had region 12 last week we had we started to do it executive board meeting was the first one um just went through vouchers for approval uh the one thing we did in that one we had to change an addendum to the RP work plans and loan agreements because of some state law changes so that we're in, in line with what the changes were. What it did for some of those loan agreements is it raised uh, was $250,000 cap. Some of those loans and that raised it up to 400,000. Housekeeping we did on that one house. That, that one and then we had our development corporation um meeting following that which we did um approve a loan for they had a, it was an application for it's called soap llc in lake view so they're building a kind of a sports bar pizzeria firehouse pizza type deal a couple blocks off of lake view see it looks like the lake Kind of not really neat place. They're gonna have a rooftop bar that looks the lake. It's right off the east side of the lake. That kind of that cove in there. But they started so, building that. They, they have because during that we just have. up there. So it's new construction. New construction. Uh, so that loan got so north of the marina, kind of what is it? Right off the east side of that. The wake cove is at. Right. 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 You know. Um, there's another loan application for our meat and poultry loan fund, which is for Yetter Locker Lakeview. We did not do anything with that because we were waiting for the loan review committee to review that. Where do they want to do? Yetter Locker. The Yetter Locker. The stuff. I think they're looking at moving. Um, it sounds like where they are currently at in Yetter, 
it's no longer in compliance with the DNR, so they physically have to move because of all the wastewater and that. Um, they're looking at where, where they can build, where, what's available. Um, but we took no action on that. Typically, we, we don't take action until the long review committee. I'm not sure if that's, if that's it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and then we did have our regular council of government meeting. And then we went through and we went through our fiscal report. Mark did that. We went through our local assistant report, which Chris did. He had we had to update our transportation improvement program. If anybody wants to look through that, I kind of went over some of the projects on that. Um, which we did have to approve that in, in that at this meeting. Then we had our executive director report and our transit report. So things are moving forward. Um, working on multiple projects. Housing projects, rehab projects, transportation has been moving right along um, through their serving and keeping up on that. Our, we have kind of gotten some new vehicles in, which Matt was telling us about during COVID, of course, some of those, there's a leg on getting some of our vehicles. But now it's kind of gotten over that. Um, Otherwise, you know, um, they have that free on the taxi day to, uh, I think it's high yeah, over in Carroll. Yeah. Is there a way that we could have that same service in Dennis and how would we implement that or how who, how do you know who, because I think the city of Carroll themselves help fund some okay. of those taxi rides. Okay. I think that's just a great idea that way people that say they're free ones. Uh, I'd have to ask Matt like, about that. I think maybe that could be something we should do. But I do think somehow the city of Carroll allows um, or helps subsidize okay. some of those rides. So let's start with the city. Yeah. City and yeah. we can talk together. Maybe I'll talk to them and see what she thinks about that. So if they want to get on their agenda. I think it's a nice service. It just seems so friendly to have one day a week and go buy your groceries and after you know it's one day a week, one well, day a month, one, yeah, day. one day. I think it's one day a week. One day a week. Maybe it's one day a week. But we can make it. I just thought when I heard that a couple months ago, I thought that's a great idea. Do they have a certain pickup point, you know? I'm not sure. I'll try to find out more information, but I think it'd be a good thing to have in our larger communities to get people to go buy groceries, not if you use one of their passes for that. Well, when you look at days like the last couple of days when it's 100 degree heat index and wow. people have to walk from mm -hmm. that side of Denison to Walmart. Yeah. Especially yeah. if they're older. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or just say no. Say no. Uh, uh, even in perfect health on a day like that, you have to walk up and buy your necessities and your prescriptions and things like that. It does. Definitely something we can look into. I think we should. So that's about it for Region 12. Right. It was a good meeting, a lot of information, a lot of things to look at. Yeah, always is. Right. Did you have anything last week you want uh, to talk about? Yeah, just a, uh, I'll, I, I do. A quick question for Terry is on the clerk of court report that we get, and it says amount collected, and then next to it is a column that says dispersed. Is it who's it dispersed to? Uh, is it dispersed to the county, or why do they have that dispersed? Column? I don't do you know, know if I know. Okay, we got to ask Karen. Okay. That. All right. Uh, had a West Hill meeting last night, and uh, their year end ended on June thirtieth. Uh, they had a yearly profit of seven hundred and ten thousand four hundred and forty dollars. So uh, that is good. They did uh, close on the lot that they purchased from Jim Gone and they're gonna build a house on it. And they closed, they purchased a house on 16th Street uh, that is four bedrooms, potentially could be five, which is gonna fit right in. They purchased price on that was 270,000. And that was the exact amount of the grant that they got earlier in the year. Um, one thing that they noticed or not noticed, but a change that they see coming through the state with all these changes that are happening is falling under one umbrella is going to be 
disabled and aging are going to fall under the same umbrella, and they're not sure exactly what that means moving forward. Um, you know, I don't know if that's, I'm assuming that's through the HHS is where it's at, um, but they don't know exactly how that's going to play out. It's supposed to be, I think, June or July 1 of 2025 when that exactly makes the official change, but they're just unaware of exactly what that's going to be. Do they think it'll be better? I mean, you kind of like substance use and mental health, you know, instead of having these lines. That's right. They're not sure. I guess they're just going to wait and see exactly what it means. But uh, Clay I, just mentioned that that's going to be a change that they're going to go through. A lot of that year. has to do with the Medicaid and the Medicare you know, services that you lose. And, you know, and, and because of that change, I mean, one of the things that Wesco, I think, potentially sees down the road is that maybe an opportunity for them. But since they care for people, a lot of people 24-7, is that yeah, are there opportunities out there for them in the aging population that aren't ready or diagnosed to go to a nursing home and they're at home and they're alone and they don't have you know kids close by is there an opportunity for them to fill maybe a void in our county that uh, we have with the aging population and so that's something that Next year, I think moving forward, once they figure out what these changes are, is can Wesco step in and try to fill some of those voids that we see? For somebody who's not disabled but was on Medicaid prior to be able to be old enough to go on Medicare, there is kind of a gap in there for some services, is what used to come up. You know, and, uh, Board and Medicaid. Yeah, Medicaid. Yeah. If you're not poor enough for Medicaid. Right, right, right. right. And, and, and you're single, you know, that's the thing is, I mean, being in the insurance business and selling long-term care insurance, we know we give a couple's discount because, and a couple doesn't have to be husband or wife, it could be two brothers, two sisters, two people the same age living in a house, um, because we know that as long as another person's there, they're going to keep them home a lot longer than uh, if they were alone. Craig, were you on the board at the time, uh, Wesco and Dewey Dice was on board, or did no. you do off by then? He's on a county supervisor, and I had breakfast with him the other day, and he was asking who was on it now. And I said, Well, Craig is on it. And he said, it was, He said, Of all the boards he served on, and this time on it, he's really enjoyed it. Let's go with that. A lot of good things happening. I mean, that's what I get from the people. Is there a Stephanie Houseman from Carroll County? Um, and she has said, First, my first day there, she was there. She said, This is my favorite board of all the boards that I have to serve on. Being a Carroll County supervisor is so I understand that sentiment. Uh, one of the things that they did start for um, at the bake shop is Thursday night they do an ice cream social now if people are interested, and they are setting up a mobile application um, for orders through the bake shop so you can uh, order on your phone. And uh, they are looking for a new board member. We had one resign. So if anybody, I guess, has the uh, name of someone or something you think would be good at that, certainly uh, let me know. I'd be happy to pass on that name. And something I guess I wanted to add, uh, since it is only 9.15, is that I don't know how many <laughs> of you guys read through um, all of those four emails that Colin sent us that had all of the stuff that the Iowa Utilities Board, which is now the IUC, the Iowa Utilities Commission, as of July 1st, they changed their name, or the governor changed their name. Um, but, you know, all the different types of ordinances that we looked at as far as zoning, uh, land use, um, development, I think Ty had talked about that before, but here's some words that the IUB or IUC said in their ruling. And this was quote, said the board, which is them, determines how the pipeline siting will interact with pre preset, with present and future land use and zoning, not necessarily how it complies, if and to what extent it complies its decision for the board. So whether you have a land use um, or a zoning ordinance in place, the pipeline does not have to comply with what your ordinance says. It just has to interact 
with your ordinance. And as far as how much of that interaction or how much it complies is the determination of the Iowa for Utilities people, Commission, for whole not for the county. Three people get to decide that over. That's exactly what exactly what, have been elected. what they've stated. And I know we talked about, okay. you know, the file um, 199, how that changed kind of the land use that we were direction that we were thinking of going. And then we were talking about abandoning what happens if they abandon pipelines. Is there anything that we can do? And the board agrees with Summit that abandoning in place is the default selected by pipeline companies and farmers alike as to not disturb the soil again. Iowa Code 479 B32-4 states, quote, the landowner may require the pipeline company to remove any pipe or pipeline facility remaining on their property. So the board says that, um, they agree that to leave it in place is the proper way to uh, abandon the pipeline. Um, however, the landowner may require the pipeline company to remove it because that's already an Iowa code. And I think the question on that for some folks that are concerned about it should be, you know, they're paying tax on it now as, you know, as an infrastructure improvement. Correct. If they were getting a revenue, that was one of the selling points of the pipeline is the money that we would get from it going through our county. Correct. That. Yep. So when they abandoned it, do they just forget about collecting property tax on that? So the farmer who's left with that, that goes away? Well, the farmer never has to pay the property tax because the farmer doesn't own the pipeline. Well, if they're abandoned. I think that's where some of that gray area is, though. And maybe I'm missing something. If so, the summit abandons it, kind of like gave it to the farmer. Is the county going to just say, "Oh, there's no nothing to see here, no pipeline anymore, so don't worry about it"? Or is that going to become an issue between the assessor and the farmer who now has that valuable pipeline in their ground? And before it was worth half a million dollars, does it's abandoned? Do we agree to forgive any taxes that would be due on that? Because that was always an issue with uh, uh, towers also, that they got decommissioned and they were still there and they no longer would even be getting the tax credit or the, uh, what did uh, they work out where they don't have to pay as much tax. That to me are the things that are the gray area that, that people have thought about, but are they addressing that, making it sure? I didn't see them address that. If it don't think that's a good part of that one. So I mean, for us, I guess it'll have to be a bridge we cross when we get there, but I can't imagine the county would ever charge the farmer any taxes for a pipeline that he doesn't own. I just can't see that happening. Um, Never owned it, so they're going to continue to have summit, the it. summit. Um, Maybe it'll just we'll, be at a lesser, the value will go down because it's unused. And I, I don't know if it would maintain any value at all being would, unused. You know what I mean? I don't know that. Nobody. I don't know if the Department of Revenue would have a voice on that because they kind of, they kind of take care of um, the utilities, the miles, the like, like power line miles. That's how that's how utility tax for that kind of service, excuse me, is taxed is paid by the utility company is their miles of line. So um, I don't, you know, this is different obviously, because- So at the end of the day, but, that tax burden would be summits until the Department of Revenue determined that it was a right. more value. So the farmer would never, the landowner would never be- Right, liable I don't think the that. farmer would ever take ownership of the pipeline. Just try to right. think through the- right. Right. I didn't know that they no. thought of it, the folks that are having to put oh, their I'm property. Sure. Uh, and I would be thinking of it if we want to have a decommissioned uh, ordinance and they're saying, oh, no need for that. No, nothing to see here. Right. But now I find out that I have a tax burden. I would assume it'd be handled the same as any underground utilities, fiber, phone. I mean, it's all taxed. The company pays taxes on it. Yeah. So it, right. when it's abandoned, what if they feed it over to a band of telecommunication? And you don't want it. Everywhere, right? Okay. All right. Just a thought. Can I, again. Can I, can I weigh in on that, quick? Where? Say, what if uh, 
I, none of us have really seen a lot of contracts. Maybe there's something where that pipeline reverts to the ownership of the farmer in some of these private contracts. That might be an avenue that we got to explore. You know, then then it would be their responsibility. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if, if that's wrote in. That's just a thought I was having as you guys were talking. Those are the thoughts. A good that, point. Yeah. Ty, I, it might it might be in those easements. Might be written in there. Which goes back to landowner individual rights to sign or not sign that, and the devil's in the details. So they need landowners maybe need to make note of that and have it checked out by, by their attorney. How but, about if you've got your property taken from you through eminent domain and they uh, decide they don't <laughs> want it anymore, and now uh, something you never wanted becomes your problem? No, I'm just thinking way far down, but yeah. that's kind of what all this is. Yeah. Makes me think of and the last thing I wanted to add about the what the Iowa Utilities Commission wrote um, and it, that we discussed was they said, lastly, several witnesses testified Summit Carbon's proposed project would likely, quote, permanently affect housing development, land use values, local tax base, tourism, and the migration of residents to a county. The county's Hamilton Direct, page 19, the board does not agree with these statements. While it is true, no permanent structures could be built in Summit Carbon's permanent easement, the board finds the jump made in the witness's testimony to this fact to be exaggerated. As shown in Chauvinick Rebuttal Exhibit 3, development can and does happen in and around all types of pipelines, both hazardous and non-hazardous in the state of Iowa. The board is unwilling to affirm the issues faced by counties, development, taxes, migration, et cetera, would be directly related to Summit Carbon's proposed hazardous liquid pipeline when the evidence shows development does occur despite the presence of a pipeline. So, I mean, we talked about all of those issues as a possible ordinance, and you can see that based on that thought that they had, I mean, there's no way we could have ever devised something that would have worked. No. Even if you had ordinances in place, they're right. saying that those, exactly. those ordinances. We don't have to comply with them. They don't have to. We just have to interact. So I didn't know if you guys all read through that, but when I read through all those pages, that's the stuff that kind of jumped out at me based on me. what we had talked about. So I just wanted to bring that to the board. Appreciate well, that. I think we explored multiple, multiple different avenues of what we could, couldn't do. We put the time into trying to do our due diligence. And um, moving forward, I guess that um, I have been reading past supervisors from 1892 <laughs> to 1893. And so if you ever have time, there's some very interesting stuff. But I just want to do one thing because this is about the auditor position and evidently the, uh, the job description of the auditor has changed. Really in 130 some years, <laughs> because this says in the in the minutes dated Friday, September 9th, 1892, and a lot of times the supervisors didn't meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They met oh, day Lord, after day after day. And <laughs> what, what, this this says in the minutes on motion, the watch found on the body of an unknown man killed near Manila to be kept by the auditor until called for by parties entitled to it or until disposed of by the Board of Supervisors. So I don't know if you've been asked to hold the watch of a dead person. Where's that? I watch? thought I was a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Someone they, from Manila? That's what they did. Walked off an individual before is they would give it to the auditor to hold. OMG. And tell the supervisor. Yeah. OMG. Was wow. that be wild? Was the auditor not out. elected back then? Or I, <laughs> <laughs> just saying, I'm just, I, you know, that's, that's great information. Yeah, I, I'm sure you, I never thought I would read that in the Hilarious. minutes of a board of supervisors. That's a good one. It's there. Well, there's another. Uh, Thank you for the. Yep. I guess there's literally nothing the auditor yeah. won't do. <laughs> right. Other job that I've signed. I have found that. I was, <laughs> as long as it doesn't smell like your phone, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> that is okay. Uh, Bobby Cattle Minerva. Kyle, what can you add to the conversation? Well, I, just to start off by 
What I got a we got I don't we probably all got another email in regards to another fold of possible ordinances. Yes. To the pipeline. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the surveying part of it, and I just kind of read through it quick. Cool. You were talking about the Bremer County. Yeah. Yep. And it and I'm not a maybe it's not a bad idea. Kind of highlights that the surveyors need to have a written paper of the landowners saying they can enter their property and such of that, which would just be another formality. But when we remember back to the inception of this pipeline, we were getting complaints of people just tromping across the property lines. So yep. maybe that's something we could look into. And I would like to forward that to Colin and have him yep. vet that. And, uh, Colin, and maybe it's already superseded by IUB, IUC as well. You know, but uh, why the change to IUC? What what did the, I don't know. I just read that on July 1st, the change that they're now called commissioners. The three people are commissioners and it's the Iowa Utilities Commission. Probably the I'm same not sure why. Usually, yeah. Yeah. Commissioners seems more like actually. But uh, I'll, I'll just forward that to Colin and have him. Okay. I got it. Are right you going to forward that to him? Yeah. Okay. Who sent that? I didn't. I'm this uh, guy right here, this Robert. From Robert Nazario. Okay. okay. Nazario. Uh, I do appreciate him keeping us in the loop. Talked with Paul yesterday, totally unrelated to what I'm going to bring up, but he said oh. that he uh, forwarded the loop with the Jacks, vetted the engineer yes. description uh -huh. and yep. all that. Yep. And the only thing he said was missing was our Jack question why there wasn't a salary, salary range, range on there. Right. So I asked Paul, but Monona County just hired their new engineer, and this is just food for thought. That was 140000 Woodbury County couldn't get anybody at 160000 So uh, just throwing some numbers out of, of counties around us that are in the same kind of spot. And it took Monona County a year and a half or longer to get somebody. So, uh, and Paul stated he thought there would be more interest out there. But he says, not saying Crawford County won't draw a lot of interest. He said, just if, if it's Woodbury County can get anybody. So that's kind of concerning to him. Woodbury's a pretty big oh, Yeah. Isn't it? And maybe that's scaring people away. A lot going on in Woodbury County. Right. right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I just thought I'd bring that information up for thought. So I don't know if that's a place we need to kind of zero in on salary. Well, if it's too well, then again, you, you know, it depends on experience as well. Right. So But can you say both? Can you have a range and based on yeah. 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 Or maybe that's the way to handle it. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an HR person, so. Uh, I told him I'd bring it up. Yeah. And then last week I met with Paul. Think that we should have a range. I mean, Paul, Paul put the initial one. He kind of thought. Did not have well, I guess I responded. It did not. They kind of just, you know. Right. Jack responded was that he was surprised there wasn't a range. He didn't say we had to have a member. Right. Right. He don't say we have to, but maybe. I don't know either. I'm kind of like, if you're interested, you're going to ask them questions. Right. I just feel like if you. Somebody you know, comes in with a whole bunch of experience. Yeah, if so. you make it too low, they're not going to call. And right. make it too high, then you're kind of stuck with that. So we're going to pay 165 and this person has no, you know, I, I think you're interested. You're interested. But anytime I think you apply for a job and the salary range is 120 to 160, you're expecting the 160. That's right. If you're offered the 120, it's like, well, what's wrong with me? Why do I get yeah. the low end? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I would yeah. Be dying. When I would think anybody who's applying would see the counties around and what they're getting paid and have an idea in their mind of what the range is. Mm -hmm. well, they could look up and see what Paul's actually making if they yeah, really yeah. wanted to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you're a researcher. So um well, I don't know. Yeah, we don't have to put it in. Yeah. I I, I, think I can see both sides because once you I throw something over out, you're kind of stuck yeah. to that numbers. Yeah. I say believe it without it. I okay. Uh and then last what day was I met over with Carol Control at City Center. I remember. Uh and we discussed the placement of the new AC units. 
and uh, leaving room for a generator, try to get all that coordinated with Todd, right? Todd. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he didn't seem that to be a problem. Uh, might have to get creative with stacking the you know, outside units or whatever. Oh, so no big deal. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not uh, yeah I'm sure there's some, some kind of rack. You know, yeah. Able to yeah. Do that. Yeah, because it just looks hideous out there now. So. There's a lot, of, I don't know, a lot of garbage that collects back there. Oh, I'm sure from the wind blowing. And well, stuff. no, there's like paint oh. cans and ladders. I don't know. But anyways, that's beside that was just one of the side effects of me going back there looking at the AC units. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's our painter stuff? Well, I kind of would think so. How did she put that? Have we had or heard any interest on the annex building? I, have I, have not. Not. I will check with Rita today. And I, see what's there. I did reach out to our electrician this morning to see how they're coming along with the rough in and they plan on, they must have had a big job over at Peyton that uh, we said John Deere, but oh. I think it's Bowerville Industries. It does a lot of R&D for John Deere. So I think he said they're getting that finished up. So they plan on being here later this week to get the electrical rough end at least started. And I forward him Jake's requirements for his server room that he needs so he can wire that up as well. So trying to keep that all rolling. And I haven't heard anything back from DMU on relocating the gas meters and cleaning that mess up, getting rid of the four meters and put one meter in. I don't know if you have or in Dave's absence. Dave was kind of Spearhead and that charge, but he is off with the medical reason that yeah. time. So we'll have to pick it up then. But yeah, I I've been I they I'll I talk the and see if there's anything on there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I the uh, thing this we got this the other thing. But did you get the RPM? I did today. Okay. With the generator. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So that's got so. And the mini split, I did talk with Todd in regards to that, what Jake had brought up last week for the oil for the mini split. And he says, I can get you a cheaper one, but it's not as dependable. Who's that? Todd with Carol. Oh, not as dependable. Yeah. He said these have a long history of being very dependable. Well, there's a lot at stake if it's not dependable when you've got all your. And that's kind of what his point was. He okay. Says, I can base. You know, I feel comfortable with this one, the other one. And he says, What are you protecting with that? So, so to go with the Mitsubishi. Yeah, yep. go with the $9,700 one. So, all right. And I, Jake asked me this morning, I told him to put it back on next week's agenda to take action on that. Uh, yeah, because we can't move forward without any of those things and the painting and all and, of the rearranging of cabinets and all that. Yeah, and they will be. You know, whenever I don't want to get there next week or whatever, start with the AC or the furnace update. So, all right, sounds good. Then I, yes, on a meeting Friday at Cherokee. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. Is that it? Ty, you got anything that you want to talk about here? Can we get Paul in here? Or? Paul, yeah, I got. Excuse me, Paul's not coming. I just got a couple things. So, uh, here's a good point of interest. They actually got three streetcars down here in Tampa, and them streetcars are from Ida Grove. So that's kind of cool. So, oh. yeah. they got me a lot of streetcars. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. So I had a little bit of taste of home right down here in Tampa. Anyway, uh, I was talking to a bunch of supervisors that are dealing with solar issues just like we are, and. Uh, that's some really interesting stuff. There's there's a lot of them, especially in the urban areas, that are pushing for solar over parking lots. So it also shades your car while it's generating power for everybody else. So I thought there might be some interesting ways that we could kind of just, as we're driving around the county, look for areas that maybe would not steal ag land and create places for solar fields. Uh, I did talk to a, a commissioner from out in Virginia and they have created an ordinance out in that county that they actually only authorize 2% of all ag line, excuse me, ag land in the county to be authorized for solar fields. 
So it basically puts a limit on the ground that they can use. So basically once 2% has been used up of ag land, that's it. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. And I remember just some of the highlights that really stuck out to me as you guys were talking that I wanted to make sure to bring up. I mean, I'll obviously be able, be able to give you a little better report next week when I get everything together so I don't bore you with all the new shit. But uh, – uh, when you were talking about the engineer stuff, you know, and somebody said they weren't HR, you know, just remember we could bring Jack in for free. So let's, let's not ever forget that. Uh, that's about all I got, unless you got any questions. I'm sitting here at the airport when I, I scream from my plane, I'll probably check out if you guys aren't done yet. Probably should catch that plane. I'd advise that. Is he on his way home or on his way out? Home. Home. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to. I was going to say, because if you were going to stay there, I have a, a cousin, Douglas Dozark, that owns Cycle Brewing <laughs> in Tampa, oh. Florida, where you could stop by there. Well, I would have known that. I'd have <laughs> probably drug a bunch of supervisors and commissioners with me. Yeah. 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 All right. So Paul's not coming today. Ben, no, no. oh, Ben. Okay. Okay. All, right. All, All right. Very good. All right. Very good. All right. So the tie's done. Um, we could. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. Out of town, so I did not. You have an idea of our resolution for the general ballot? We could. We could. Uh, do we want to go ahead and discuss uh, the resolution uh, to place the clerk trustee question on the general ballot? Sure. All right, let's get that one out of the way. Yeah. I don't know if you read it or saw it in I your did. packet. I did. Um, uh, we have the opportunity to put this on the general ballot. I can't remember if it's if we can do it every every general ballot. Can't remember that anyway. It's been a few years since we've done it. Um, so it um, the so language this is, not is new or different. It's not okay. something new, but it puts it on. So we have we have um, twenty townships, twenty or twenty five. 20, I think. Five anyway, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, 20. And it's about 50 50 as to those that are elected and those that are appointed. Um, the appointed ones, we always get um, suggestions from the current trustees um, as far as replacements for vacancies. Um, so, sure. and what I mean by elected or appointed, that would be the trustees and the clerk are either elected or appointed. Um, it's hard to get people to put their names on the ballot for those positions. Um, and if there aren't any, then we may get one or two and we end up drawing names out of a hat to break a tie because they don't, it doesn't, you know, there aren't very many write-in votes for those positions. No. Oh, they're, yeah. So um, we have to do this township specific. So yeah, yes, the Stockholm. resolution won't be, but we will we will only put it on the ballot for the townships that need it. Okay, so we just can't pass a broad one that gives us the ability just to appoint right. a trustee whenever it open whenever it's no. open for whatever township. No, we can't do that. No, okay. I mean, it has to. It, this will, so this language will go on the ballot. They have the opportunity to vote for it. Or vote against it, but the, for um, a specific township. Yes, it'll be for a specific okay. township. All right. Okay. What action did we take eight years ago, or whatever? We could have started. We started filling by point. We just did so. We've been doing that a long time. Yeah. It's been 50 50 for a long time. Okay. We may have added a township or two back then. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, I just remember taking some we're trying to get more of them to be appointed just because of, you know, it's hard, hard to get to. them, we get their names on the ballot. And it's yes. always more effective to have a name on the ballot. We do send out, Michelle sends out a letter to the townships every July, mid-July, which she just did it this last Friday. Um, it is for their financial paperwork. We also include um, on the years that there's a general election, um, the affidavit of candidacy. So those people that are going to be on the ballot can fill out those affidavits of candidacy. So what we would be doing today, just putting it, passing it, put it on the general ballot, yep. and then allowing those townships to vote, to vote. whether or not they want to appoint. Yeah, 
they get to make the ultimate decision, but we just need by resolution. Um, the, but it would only be those people in that township that would vote. Right, that exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why we end up with so many ballot styles yeah. in the general election, right. because uh, partially because of the townships, they all get, right. if they're an elected position, exactly. they they have a different ballot style. So, exactly. Yeah. I'll make a motion to the clerk trustee question on the panel ballot. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Is a resolution, so I'll call it by name. Aye. 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 Okay, you thank you. Okay. Chair votes aye. A uh, resolution yes. has been thank passed to be on the ballot. Just an interesting, 2% of the acres in Crawford County would be 9,016 acres. Really? 14, 14 sections. So when you say 2% of something, it's still a pretty big number. I mean, I can't imagine having 9,000 acres covered with solar panels. No, I was at 2%. That doesn't seem too bad. But you put that it like do that. the math. Thank you for doing the math. Are you off a zero? No. Nope. <laughs> I double check. <laughs> double double check, check is work. We have four. You Googled it. 400. Oh, I get there. 20 times 36 times 640 comes up with 460,800 acres. Oh. Is that all ag, though? That's all ag. That's just the whole county in general. Right. So it's, I mean, it would be less if we just did the. Right. But just the I just, right. Gotcha. Still, but just putting a number in to kind of put it in perspective. All right. Uh, do we have time to discuss and take action on the DHS text? That should be here. Yeah. That long. should take a long. Sure. Oh, the flip top end gets there. You might have to wait a minute. Uh, what do we have about that? Yeah. So it's action that the board takes every year. Um, I contact DHS to make sure that the um, two landowners that are currently have suspended taxes are still in their program in the DHS program. Uh -huh. um, so, and they are. Okay. Yeah. The Iowa code that's pursuant to this is 427.9. Um, for your information. Okay, so it's a little housekeeping basically, but then yeah. you still are because yeah. we're working on tax billing currently and that's the season that we we prepare this and verify that that's accurate. All right. So it's on. well I would make a motion to approve the two tax suspensions that are met the requirements. Uh that's wrong. And they're, they're deemed eligible for the suspension. So in the front, it's DHS. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Someday it will be. The, the, and just, you know, it's not that these taxes never have to be paid, but sometime right. they will be caught up. Yeah, so. They're just being yeah. held into the limbo with no penalty or anything. Yeah. Iowa code uh, allows it, so. Yep. We probably should approve it. So we have a motion. Sorry, any second. Uh, any further discussion? That'll call the vote. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Chair votes I aye. The suspensions that. have been approved. Um, let's go ahead and discuss and take action on the appointment of Luane Grono as to the Veteran Affairs Commission for a three year term ending June 30th of 2027. Uh, he does an excellent job, really. Uh, I move we appoint Lorraine Grono to the Veteran yeah. Affairs Commission for a three-year term ending June 30, Very 2027. Very so, All right. Any further discussion? All right. I'll call the motion. All in favor, aye. 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 The witness is on for another three years. So that is good. All righty. Uh, so hope we taking care of everything else until... Uh, at the front of those two. Oh, please. Oh. Got it. Oh. I mean, her. Yeah. Who? Her. Jean.
This one here, you got a front. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Maybe doing Ty's job for him, making sure I get the front and the back. He appreciates it. <laughs> Good morning. Dan. Good oh, morning. Right on time. Perfect timing. Sure. <laughs> good All righty. Right. How are you? Good. Like in the cooler weather out there a little bit. Yeah. You should it's learn yesterday. It. Wasn't it though? <laughs> Just stand out there and nice the corn dog. Corn like Yeah, the corn doesn't like it. Didn't quite care for it at the fair though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, the way the forecast helps you find you on the coolest copper time through the recent history. Yeah. That will be nice. It makes it a lot easier to help them <laughs> kids out there with those animals. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, they, <laughs> they had a hot one last week. So. <laughs> Do I get one? Thank yeah, you. Sure can. Appreciate it. Yeah, so that uh, one of the great crew that are getting close to finishing up on uh, U Avenue down there. That uh, there uh, probably won't be this week. Probably be uh, first part of next week. They'll be wrapping that up, and uh, and then uh, just kind of discussing on Monday with them. But uh, might uh, use some of the great crew guys and try and fix up some of these. Uh, old grading projects where we've had a lot of washing and uh in Damon's territory where it just it's you know trying to fix some of these areas that he's just not able to get a handle and need a little more manpower and some of these washouts that uh and uh just will use the great crews uh work for the fields to try and get them head on that so and then we're probably looking up uh at some point moving up to Jay Avenue uh, uh yeah, I used to use uh, West Coast and uh, okay. and and uh, working on that stretch. So that's kind of the tentative plan, anyway. But uh, uh, Sean and Dave are out looking at uh, old gritty projects where we just had those dry conditions the last few years when we were doing them that uh, kind of been a lot more susceptible to the you know the, the rain and washouts and maybe the seasons didn't take hold. So trying to get a list of where we're going to do some fixing and uh, get a hand on things. So. But, um, well, we've kind of gone into that dry stretch. I've gotten a few calls on washboards and some rough roads. It's just when you get into the driver times, that sets up those conditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the other side of that, I got a phone call said, why are we waiting the dang roads so much? We're just creating more washboards. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, I don't know what direction to go with that. Uh, <laughs> Either we blame them or we don't. Yeah, that's just what we, and I kind of see at some point of that, it's like, yeah, we do. If they're going to bring the tie it back together, you just keep roughing it up. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, at some point, probably got to. You still got to get them. Work for it. It's kind of next chapter. Oh, look at I know. Lyric Flavor, he's, he's excited about uh, the detour on 59th Street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of sarcasm when you're telling Yeah. Well, yeah. He, he knows that there's going to be more traffic going around all that. Absolutely. Uh, and he's anticipating it. So we'll, we'll try to keep ahead of things the best we can. So it shuts out Thursday, right? 59. Yes, it does. 59 shuts out Thursday. And uh, I believe I haven't been out to make sure, but uh, also as well, we put, uh, put, apply the dust control sure. uh, areas uh, ahead of it. Uh, uh, I gotta go check and make sure that got done last couple of days. Uh, might it be today that they're gonna do that? So at least uh, trying to get ahead of that. So the uh, bridge crew, they're they're gonna be uh, close to wrapping up uh, down there on Ann Avenue. I think they're struggling getting the last top plate on that structural plate there. Uh, oh. It's fighting them a little bit, but uh, and then they got a lot of backfill on the dirt road to fill in backfill on that, but. Uh, it's coming along on on that structural plate, and uh, and uh, I'll be a good job done. Now the bridge gone. You betcha. You went off the system. <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I, I'm not sure if we can discuss where we're going next. I'm sure Paul's got a plan there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, sure, sure. We're over Google. <laughs> we got a lot of plates we could put, or a lot of uh, culverts we could have them be putting in, or, or move them to the next bridge on the list. So, but uh, but yeah, roadside crew, they're they're still out there spraying and pretty ink to kill all the weeds like a bad man. And uh, staying ahead of weeds and stuff. He, he, he does get those weeds. So. Right, from that, you can pull and set up a couple things with the uh, set up a motion to well, motion to approve a, a supplemental agreement for final design services by Cone and Burns on the Vale Bridge. You go over the booyer there, East Booyer. And uh, let's see, I'm not sure it's also discussed. 48,000. 48, so that's an increase of 48,750. Over the original, or when it says supplemental agreement, to me that you just know, means that it's you didn't discuss it a lot with me. I, I question so, you know, being supplemental, it, 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 it's just the and final just design not. fees in it, yeah, or that uh, I, I'm not sure. I was a supplemental that, to our already contract with them you know, to do some of our bridge inspections. So I don't know. Yeah, it's a good, good point. Supplemental agreement for final design. Huh? Yeah, I mean, they're above and beyond what they're already doing. That's, that's the way I take it. Yes. Additional above and beyond agreement, what we extra agreement yeah. uh, for the final design. Well, so, that's why I agree for $48,750. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, honest. I didn't discuss it a lot with me. Yeah, maybe it just stood within here. I'll make it easy. Okay. Related to the bridge replacement. So project. supplementing the agreement submitted in accordance back in January 10th of 2023 and request for final design services. So obviously, obviously it's something that needs to be done in order to put the uh, project on. Right. I'll be honest, I don't know if that's standard if they, they uh, get to the final design phase and, and then uh, you know, the project fees are discussed at that point. But, and like I said, Paul didn't discuss it a whole lot with me. He just said that something to come up with that. And so it's all discuss a bunch of six things pulled together. So that's what I'm assuming. Yes. 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 Well, I imagine. <laughs> It is something we don't even have a contract we entered into back in. I believe we have to pull, pull that contract and find exactly what it is. But I feel confident that Paul would accept that. Yeah, me too. I like, certainly agree with that. With that. And, yeah, and make sure that's 100%. So I would make a motion to approve the, agree, the supplemental agreement. Small. Second. All right. Got first and second. Any further discussion on the uh, supplemental agreement? I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Same sign. Tie. Did you vote? All right. Very good. Yes. Sure, sure. both sides. So We've good. approved that agreement. Thank you for the information. All right. Next, you have the purchase of some maintenance gravel. Right. Right. You got to. Uh, I we're put a lot. Roads need a lot more than uh, what we were, uh, as we were going through the gravel hole, uh, they were going through the piles pretty good. They were playing on the roads. Uh, and uh, winter, over the winter, we must have, uh, <laughs> some must have been lost and, uh, and took a little more than anticipated. And uh, uh, well, that, that's a you know, motion to approve an additional, uh, so to go from 6,000 to 80,000 uh, was for extract for grill here. Is that a blended mix? You know, past with straps where we've got like 10% uh, limestone. Yeah. Yes, it is a blended mix. Well, uh, that, the, uh, the way it looks to me. I, I think it's, that, that's really worked out well. I think so. Uh, I think you guys like it. It gives yeah, it a little it bit more of a base, off. but yet ties it all together. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, for 2025 delivery and payment. So. I'll make the motion to approve item number five for a 20 ton of maintenance gravel to be purchased. They told Paul yesterday, right. gravels, today is the cheapest we can buy them. Yep. It won't be cheaper than us. Seems to be a standard. <laughs> it has not gone down it as our side on the floor. I, I do think that we've been there, we're talking about 10% or 15% blended the limestone in with what Stratford gives us and makes a pretty good mix. Yep. 
We do the mixing. They do. Or they, they do. do. They do. They add in 10% or whatever we choose of, of limestone in with it. And it just gives you a little bit more of a base, but still so binds. So we pay the 803 for the gravel, then we pay for the limestone that they blended yep. up there. No, this is the mix. This is the mix. This is the mix. Yep. Okay. That's what we're getting. Yep. But then we also have to get it delivered here. So. Yeah, and they do. I guess I don't know what the plan is for leaving some of that up there and having Brandon uh, kind of, you know, I'll give them uh, something to hold, you know, over the next few months. This delivery in 2025. Yeah, this is for next year. 2025. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to oh, need it. This is just an additional yep. 25 oh, for next yep. year. Yep. Yep. No. We do have some that we from the ground. More than we thought we were going to do. So we're going to have to stop that. Brandon's supposed to get it once the flooding waters go down. We're going to run out. So, call the question. Motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Chairman aye. Sure, aye. I, heard, I see aye. Aye. So, yeah. Got thumbs up. All righty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next, we have a I discussion. Believe gonna, and see if I'm getting sick. Uh, just uh, initials on that. Uh, we don't just uh, take action. Yeah, and Paul, it. Yeah. Uh, uh, just yeah. anywhere by the, the total there. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, somewhere up on that. And then he changed that to 80,000. Paul said yesterday that it's fortunate that our revenues have been good. We don't need to find. He just had that main initial that there's somewhere by the total. This additional 20,000 yeah. that our revenues yeah. continue yeah. to be strong. So he can yeah. tell it's a good it's time. It's not like we're not going to ever use it. Correct. All right. Yeah, it's not Discussing going anywhere. <laughs> on and consideration for approval of resolution related to the reclassification of a portion of K Avenue from Area Service C Road to Area Service B Road. Right. That's next on. Uh, so we are uh, looking for a motion to uh, to approve the addition. No, no, no. no. Uh, consideration for approval. Well, the B. Just trying to follow through here. I know. Discussion on this consideration a for approval. And then we I don't see it on the agenda anywhere to take action. That's right. I guess that's why he's got on put it on item next eight week. to put on next week's agenda to take action. Well, I thought it would be interesting what you brought up about the old uh when it passed minutes of how it got from a B to a C grade. Well, and there's there's a process to get it from a B to a C, and there's a process that gets it from a C to a B. Correct. And we've met. I just want to read that. I guess yeah, I, I certainly can read that out. Is when we talked to Paul, Paul mentioned that when he that in the you can see the date on this. This was 2003, March 4th, 2003. That in the early 2000s they started reclassifying these level C roads or just classifying any gravel road that before it used to just be gravel and dirt. And then the state came out and said, hey, we want you to classify them either A, B, or C level roads. And the resolution that was passed uh, on that date stated that uh, roads may only be classified as area service C by resolution of the board upon petition signed by all the landowners adjoining the road. The resolution sh shall specify the level of maintenance effort and the persons who will have access uh, right to the road. And that was done and passed uh, by the board on that specific road on the 15th of April, 2003. And it was signed by all of the landowners that um, were around that road at that time, everybody signed. So that's why it became a level C road. And now, I mean, initially when I read that, because I even went over and talked to Colin about it, I'm like, well, currently then if we have someone that doesn't want to sign, does that mean it automatically comes out as a level C road or it doesn't become a level C road? And Colin told me that no, Craig, section seven of this, or, of this uh, resolution has a reclassification. So what happens, how do you reclassify a road? And it says a road with an area service C classification shall retain the classification until such time as a petition for reclassification is submitted to the board. The, the petition shall be signed by one or more adjoining landowners 
the board shall approve or deny the request for reclassification within 60 days of receipt of the petition. I mean, it doesn't say in there it has to be a written petition. So to me, I guess when Casey came to the board and verbally said, hey, I'd like to have that reclassified to me, that's when that 60 day time clock started that he's asking us as board members to reconsider or, or, or to consider that uh, we reclassify that from a level C to a level B road. That's the way that I and our county attorney both uh, interpret what that resolution says. So I guess any, I, that's- I agree. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I just, you know, I drove up there and looked at it and it's beautiful up there the way it is, you know. And as far as the classification to the level B, it really is not going to change the the dynamics or the, the look of that strip of road there, other than might be some granular material put on there through some sort of agreement with the landowner and the county. So, well, I, I mean, it's spelled out. And uh, back in 2003, if one person wouldn't have signed it, it would never have been changed. Right. And now we have a, a, a gentleman that is in full construction of a new residence back there. So I feel it's our uh, my obligation of maybe this board's to reclassify it to help that gentleman out. Because he would not have signed it back then, I guess. We encourage uh, new construction in Crawford County all over. So that's something that I highly, you know, think is great to have more uh, of building back there than needs to be yeah, I, I, you know, valuable. The consideration you guys put in fear of the excess traffic. I, I don't, once that house is there, I mean, then Casey will, it'll be him. And, Whoever he invites in there, I don't see a big party zone happening back here because he just run them off. I mean, I, I appreciate everybody's input on that. I, do too. I think it's our obligation to reclassify it back to a level B. And the safety issues of having that gate shut when there's an emergency back there, and uh, you know, you're home every time you want to go with your back and forth with groceries, the gate's locked. It just doesn't make sense to have a door lock or gate lock to get to the where you call home. It doesn't. That's where he's chosen to build a beautiful home. So we have to encourage that. Great. Could I interject? Dave's yes. interjecting right Dave. briefly. We, the uh we, it, when when Craig was reading through that it said that he uh that if like Casey's petitioning it had to be assigned a document. I'm pretty sure that's how I heard that. So would that mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of going on a technicality, but then that would have future evidence that, that was actually petitioned, the board was petitioned, other than just some minutes. So, I mean, I just wanted to bring that up. I was I was hearing that as Greg, Greg was reading. You are Thank correct, Ty, is that it, it does, I guess I took the first part of it says, at such time as a petition for reclassification is submitted to the board, and then the next sentence, you are correct. It says the petition shall be signed by one or more adjoining landowners. So I guess that makes the oral part of it um, mute, that uh, it, it needs to be a written petition um, to, to us. And it says then the board shall approve or deny the request for reclassification within 60 days of receipt of the petition. Thank you for clarifying. So then we need a written petition. Right. What did the to go forward? What did the petition look like that it's all was all signed, signed by, and by yeah. Yeah. I mean okay. So even Wendell signed it. Yep. Okay. So he would just need to basically take this and ask the exact opposite of what this does. Mm -hmm. It's only it says once a petition it doesn't say that all landowners have well, to sign. Yeah. I mean, if, right? I think he could just say, if "Casey, put dear board of supervisors, please consider this as a petition to reclassify K Avenue to a level B. Sign it and give it to us, and that's it. That's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it has to be anything. Mm -hmm. At least we know the process. I mean, yeah. we know that we need that. 
So right. then we have 60 days and then we can right. make that consideration and vote on it. Right. Um, I guess I'd like to know if there's any input. I would like to ask how you formally object to it. The minutes that were done for June 25th said there was no, I, I believe that was stated that that was just the motion and opening the hearing, but I mean, when that time comes, do we just stipulate orally that there's an objection to it? We've taken written objections to our comments too. We can be. It matter. It matter. It, according to what I read, it looks like it can be oral. On that part, if we're objecting to it, it looks like it can be written or oral. Because that, that, that one specifies that. That's why we start the meeting. Okay. But there. now we touch the clock has changed. And it starts as soon as Casey puts a uh, written petition in there. Thanks for your due diligence, Kai. You bet. I mean, uh, I guess you know when you're when you're on the board, it's and you pass something like these guys did in 2003. You wonder, hey, do future boards follow what we put in place? And so uh, it's nice to see, or it's nice to be able to go back and look to see what exactly was passed. So we are following what that board passed at that time. What they intended. And the description of the roads has also changed a little bit. I mean, I have that in this file where it initially in 2003, it was a little bit, the zero classification was written a little differently than a little bit later when they signed another one in 2004. And I do have that information here. I don't have that. We, we, yeah, do we get a copy of that? Well, I think we got, you picked up that copy. Well, so we have um, so you should have that one. The original one, you might not. We have that copy of that one. So I, I mean, I can give you that one. It doesn't matter. That one makes that one null. That nullifies that original one since it was changed in 2004. So um, you can have it or not. It doesn't matter. I, I can get it. Have they got the new signage up? I went out there the day of the meeting and there was, but the signage is up and everything like over the 4th of July, things were. Uh, I, believe, I thought it myself, but I believe so. Uh, uh, but the, the, I have the, another the, question. I just have another question. There's a sign there, the blue sign, you know, the 911 sign. It's right at that gate. It says 2729 or whatever. Yeah, I see. I think just have a question where does that go when it's a B or a C road? Um, and for the emergency part that Gene mentioned, and that Casey mentioned at the last meeting. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, 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 know if there's one specific location that for Iowa code states an Iowa one sign has to be at, but where it was placed was by the green gate, right. Which I seen that and I thought too well, but if I was a first responder trying to find that location. Well, if they'll go to Dean's or my house, they still won't go back to Casey. So I mean, so Casey's point was well taken that that they as Dean just attested to. And I'm just bringing that up for you guys. So what did what I was when construction is completed, it might get moved to his driveway. Uh, that's what I would. Well, they can't. Make the they couldn't put it anywhere until you get this result. Right. Uh, and back to the petition, I I don't know. I think Casey might have signed a petition with Paul before that last hearing. I'm not sure. You got a roll. Um, Excuse me, Ty. He's got a roll. Oh, got a roll. All right. Thanks for your input. Appreciate it. Back and that's why you needed to vote for. Did you get to end? Yeah. yeah. Ben, do you know if there was any written petition from Casey that? I, I'm not familiar with it. No. I uh, want to make note, but ask Paul. Well, like I said, he's dealt mostly with Paul. I can check or to it. I can check now to submit it something writing. I can give you guys what Carroll County does on the situations. Medellin County, there's a basis for everything. Carroll County, they just had them, and the landowner paid to get the, the road up to code, and then the county maintained it. Casey right. and his family, it's not just my son, it's his family. It hurts me. It hurts me bad. He doesn't want one tree taken down. Well, they know that. There would be no 10 point in 10 years. My son is here. And I got to come to the board 
If it, everybody says that's a great idea, but they don't want it in their backyard. And I hope there's good feelings that after this is done. He introduced himself to Ray. He introduced himself. It's his wife and my grandson that live there, not just my son. To go through this is so sad. Who on that board would want a gate with the possibility of being locked and no nurse to work and see in that house? When my grandson is 15 and drives to school, are you going to expect him to get out of that gate? The things I've done for this community are cut. He's done for this country, this county, and they have this brought up. I understand nobody wants time. There's a house being built across from me. We're taking them cookies when they build it. Look at what Carroll County's done. Look at what my Monona County's done to get people to come back to the community. Um, to sit here and worry about the gate, those people aren't going to turn around in your driveway. Now we're going to turn around in Casey's driveway. They have no problem with that. They'll handle it. But I just don't understand why anybody would want that for a young couple. It's sad. It's really sad for me. It's sad. And I voice in my opinion. This is kind of an bird in the first place. Casey would have just come and talked to us. No, Casey just got mad and went to Paul and wants to change the road. No. I have no problem working out. I told Casey 100% I would leave the gates open. But why would the gates even have to be there anymore? They don't have to be. I don't care if they're there or not. Yeah. All I'm asking is to put a couple signs up there. But there's signs now. Signs are there. Or let's move the gates down to the bottom, this bottom of the out. Would yeah. you guys be okay with that? And the chance they were locked for you guys? We don't want gates. KR, we, we're not in my new access at all. KR, we this was the original C road designation it was foisted upon us in the first place. So we found the value of it after it, it was put there. But Elizabeth wanted it a C road at that time. That was how that was set up. And have, by state statute, I mean, all level C roads have to have a gate. Absolutely. That's, right. It says that's right. That's by law. They have to. We, right. And, by we have to. and it's just level C from that point to where Casey's yeah. building. That's why the gate sits right there. Yes. But it's not a level C road to your desk. He could have petitioned for a class A road. Right. He could have petitioned for a class A road. And that has been. And that the county would have to maintain it. He wants to keep it the way it is. It's beautiful back there. And no, he sold us it. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't really understand. I wouldn't want to change it, build it back in there. Just oh, yeah. The gate. To that. So we just have to go through the process, correct? So yeah. it looks like it's on the agenda next week. Um, I mean, if Casey hasn't submitted something in writing, certainly tell him to. And I would think by next Wednesday or Tuesday, we'll have, uh, we'll have it on the agenda yep. For to, to be voted on. Today, it's not on as a take action item on Paul's. Uh, it's just a discussion and consideration. So, take action will be on the agenda for next week. Correct? Pending the petition. We, we need to have right. that first. Right. Okay. Yeah. That will be the thing. There may be, there may be one down in the office. I don't know if we're so. petition or not. I, I guess I can't say it. But uh, I mean, I as far as the 9190. Posted. Well, we don't have to wait for 60 days. We, we just have 60 days. I'm oh. saying that if we have something written, from Casey, either on file or by next Tuesday, we will decide next Tuesday. We have, we can't uh, make it go longer than sixty days. We can't for long. It, it has to be for yeah. so There's, be there's no reason of waiting. So, that was to keep the board from procrastinating. So, uh, so that discussion is uh, we'll have it on the agenda for next week. Thank you so sure. much. Does that have to be a that has to be a resolution. Public hearing. We already had post public hearing. We had public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're just going to yeah. take that action. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we've got the right stuff on our agenda. All right. So you have that to have it on our agenda as a take action next week. It will be on Paul's agenda yeah. to take action. Okay. Okay. All righty. So we've Which taken does. care of uh, the resolution for the clerk. We've taken care of. So we're down to else. discussion. Anything else down before we move on? Oh. No, I don't. Okay. All right. Did you answer my question about the 401 objection to it at all? Oh. Because, Terry, when I looked at that June 25th minutes, 
I'm just trying to go back to Is that, that. what it said? It, I think. I mean, that was a public hearing. There the, was. The way I read it, it looked like the motion and the I part of it was, wasn't objected to. And then we had, then there didn't stipulate a discussion. Mm -hmm. I just want to go down on record. Yeah. We're still objecting to it. Right. Um, and let me go back and look at that because maybe we need to amend those minutes. Closing. I, right. you know, I'm glad you I, brought I, it. It was two weeks ago, exactly right? Was when the hearing was. It was in last week's paper, Dennis and paper. Right. So but I just didn't know if I needed to formulate because we did just reference something from 2003. I just want this to, to be um, that. The um, motion and uh, the vote. I know it's 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 a moot point whether no, we object to it or not. No, but it needs to hearing. be. I just want it. Public I record. want it on yeah, the absolutely. record that we that's, are that's fine. for the future. Yes. For you know, watching you know from two thousand three to now, this occurring, and who knows how many different landowners right. they are here, they are anywhere, right. and what may transpire. Right. I mean, right. I mean, you know, I don't have any objections to Casey building out there, right. obviously. Um, but um, I do know a lot of bad things happen out in our neck of the woods. Just had somebody. Decided to on a straight road, go into our land and, you know, try to get back out and drive right over our fence. You know, um, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I want this officially that there's an objection because it might come up again in a different way. I think we'll just have to note that in the minutes well, next week. So that we can, can. I mean, because I'm keeping the record. I mean, like I, right. like I said, I, I think I, Kyle, Kyle's right is that our previous motions were just to go into a public hearing I guess and then that come out of the public hearing. It, that just, we never decided anything or had a vote in, within the public hearing. We just voted to have it. Yeah, I just didn't tomorrow. understand how, since it was my first supervisor right. meeting I ever attended, I just wanted to make sure. Well, you're welcome to come back. And we always have, like. to, have to ask her if, she, if anybody wrote with an objection. So, are there any written objections? Well, this one said you could orally or write. Right, right, or, right. Or, or, exactly. Or, and you were there present. We won't do that day. next week when we vote. We won't ask for any oral or written objections. Right, that's why I'm addressing it right vote. now. Exactly. <laughs> but Terry could certainly <laughs> document that, that we'll in the minutes past that you were present the and you have, yeah. you know, you did not agree with the Because even in those minutes, it didn't, she wrote our names down that we were at that okay. hearing. Yep. But it didn't like it. When I look at the high school and the school minutes, you know, it says where Wolf was there, or it says the the, the guests that were there, and in on these it doesn't. So I just didn't know gotcha. what the call was. Okay, and we can amend those minutes to reflect that if we need to. So. And that's why we always try to get well, the folks that are on Zoom as iPhone one. You know, who are you at our public hearings? We can well, we almost feel like we have to take them out if they don't say who they are because we need to identify. Who is here? What their the reason for being, and whether there's an objection or a comment. So. I appreciate you guys very definitely driving back there and and just giving right. it. We drove back there, yeah. Checking well, yeah. it out, and I, I really really appreciate that. And putting the signs up, you know, to make sure that people are aware that this is ready. not a load for everybody to be driving on. It's not ready for people to drive on. It's not a graded road. It's yeah. Not so I appreciate it very much. We appreciate you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for that. Mr. Wayne, still book no, the 911. No. Does he have it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he would yes. be the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would probably want the 911. I would guess they would move they the signs. Uh, I would guess that sign would go all the way back to the. And house. I think he probably right. put it at that location currently because. <laughs> If the gates were shut, nobody would drive back there to see that 911 sign. Obviously, well, not obviously, but if you're in the, them, not, them signs are not just randomly numbers on there. I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. That's have a rhyme or a reason, you know. There is a yeah, So yeah. that, I don't know what that number was, 2753 or whatever like that. So that's 5.53 miles east of 270th street right is where that driveway is so oh that's interesting i didn't know that's that. how the numbers that read. and if we go on north to south the little numbers start on the north side of the county and they go so like 21 40 is x amount of miles south of the north part of crawford county so mm. but some of them don't make sense they have they to wear the 
they correct were, placement well, of that. On 2520 Donovan Road, yep. that yeah, went across, because there wasn't a house there, it was just a building, and then the mm -hmm. building had a number, and then when they put the house, so it's kind of... It, it, two different numbers, two different drivers. Not, it, you could get lost, but it took a long time for them to get the number out to the new house. So oh. but anyway, mm, well, it's either here or there. Thanks for calling that. The numbering, getting them... Some blades are not as easy they used to be as well. <laughs> I can smell this. But anyhow, we get things well, like that. Probably visit with them about that. Yeah, just see if you can in, in that room section. Maybe Paul's got his petition signed and shoved in with the, the history of that chunk of road. So I'll take a look. Yeah. And, uh, and if it doesn't, like I said, I will get in contact. We can get in contact with Casey and then tell them. Yeah, yeah we. It's from yeah. Not that so, fancy. Yeah, that's yeah. a Sound like that. I'm sure KR is probably already on the phone yeah. with Casey. Yeah, so. yeah, I guarantee it. Yep, yep. yep. So Sounds good. Thank you. We'll have it taken care of. All righty. So we have a discussion taking action concerning the compensation board. I'm not sure who put that on the agenda. I was going to I think it was one of them. I think they're on there we, right. in two weeks. Well, that was a yeah. man. That was two yeah. weeks ago. So. <laughs> Good memory, Terry. Good. Well, no, I was reminded because I think we forgot to, and I had sent out information to the other elected officials being okay. that the board is intending on discussing this again in two weeks. And all right, then well, I'm sure it helped us to remember. I had noticed to get it, it on the agenda. It had been I, my I mind. looked at it and I didn't see it. And it yep. was amended. So, yep. all righty. So, yep. okay, what's the thought of the board what is your uh what are you thinking about you know at region 12 we talked uh we talked about this mm -hmm. between meetings with all the supervisors there and they're the majority of them all were in favor of reinstating the comp board as a layer of checks and balances uh you had a board that's going to do their due diligence to come up with the numbers and to recommend back to the supervisors um, I guess it, we talked about, we seem still adjust to what we feel is necessity or what we need to as how far our budget works. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of in that camp. I, I feel like the comp board that we have did a very good job we last did. year, um, came to us with their numbers, with their, what they studied and looked into. Um, of course, we did reduce it back. Um, I think the fear a little bit is in, it's just in the supervisor's hands that, not that we would do that, but. Yeah, that, but other boards also. Oh, yeah. and the, the Where's reason. the misconception that? Right. Right. The perception right. that we're favoring one right. office over the other, where, you know, if we do reinstate the comp board, that, that would help with that perception that we did have a side board that came up with the homework and the, the work that shows what was recommended right. or raises. But the difference with the new uh, code is that you don't have to, and it, we always had it that everybody has to go down the same, but now with the new law, you don't have to go down the same. No, we can. Again, no, we can you go down independently, yeah. raise, that, lower, whatever. But I still feel like it's the starting point of right to top board is going to get us. Just when, you know, the back, the blue came in and they had that, it, it all had to go down the same and that made it very difficult. I mean, I'm in favor because what, what they said, I guess, as far as keeping the comp board, I would like to have the ability to talk to the comp board prior to them meeting so that we can tell them, look, it, the chairperson usually does. Okay, um, just just to say, like, um, I'm just this is a hypothetical, okay? Yep. But uh, if we are, if our rankings as far as our department heads, if one is really high in the state and the other ones are really low, we say, look, we want to address these two right here. We don't need to do anything here because we're already right. either paying enough or overpaying or whatever. But here we're not paying enough. So we want you to focus on trying to get these back up to what you would say would be state average or comp right. or whatever terminology you want to use um, and have that conversation with them. So they are aware that when I come to the board of supervisors, I want to be able, if this is what they want to address, then that's what we're going to address. That type of thing. We can do that. Okay. Uh, I, 
I'm in favor of keeping it. Is it just they've got shoulder work and everything, and they can bring their recommendations to us. Well, we can act on them accordingly, but I, I'm not sure, but I don't know if it's ever been done. We say, check your work. We may not agree with everything and just say, hey, can you reconvene? And the state requires yeah. them to check, have their work or us if we decide not to have them, we have to show our work. So we have to show our work. Know, ultimately, I think it's a, a a, a key part to the to the process of raises or adjustments of salary for elected officials. And I mean, it takes out. I don't know. They got it's just another layer of transparency and and, and voices being heard. Have the other elected officials weighed in. Maybe, maybe you guys don't want. I don't know. Maybe you guys don't be like. Oh, they knew this meeting was going to be today. I, I mean, they get the agenda. So, I mean, you guys, you're part of it. What's your thoughts? I, I, I feel like the people get is a good deal. Yeah. Right. I think we need to keep it. I think right. it's going to be beneficial to the to you. In decision making, and all of our reps are also taxpayers, so it's giving them right. voice as well. I mean, it's not just the board saying you're going to do this. And like you said before, they're they did their due diligence and they're showing you guys what they're proposing and why. So it takes more like we're off of you as well. They are, yeah, and the concern that I got, you know, is that they would do all the legwork and uh, we would not. Paying attention to it, so that's that was a concern of one of the representatives for that uh, they didn't want to keep the job if we weren't going to listen to what they said, look at their what they presented, and uh, take that basis change on that board. Year, I don't know yearly, but it's not always the same representatives. On it. Some people choose not to be involved in it anymore, or or. You guys, as elected officials, get to choose who you want. So right. Maybe if you felt like the last person you had was maybe not do the draft. fighter you were open for, you get to pick whoever you want. You know, we don't. That's the uniqueness of it. We don't. Who typically sets up that meeting up? I think the, uh, my office. Your office. Okay. okay. So, that's right. Uh, nothing will change with that. I mean, no. It could, but it probably won't. Why would it? Do you think our ISAC resolution sample resolution to reinstate the cop board is sufficient? I don't know. I just I printed it this morning. I didn't really read it. I would think we made it fairly straightforward. Of so since on July first, all the cop boards were disbanded. Correct. At this exact so moment, so if you there. want to uh, have one. You have to pass a resolution. A resolution. Then, is the comp board um, once it's back in place? Is it the exact same role that it held before, or is it something that we can dictate as to what its role is, or what rules does the comp board have if they're all disbanded on July first, and we say, hey, no, we want our comp board back, then they're in the exact same role as they were. Prior to July one, or if those elected officials want to keep their representative, they can change. Is that what you're talking about? I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's saying is how the through IO code previously, the comp board worked within that arena of IO code. Right, but now that IO code There's... says it's no longer, does each county get a set criteria on? What the top board gets to work around is that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think exactly. the Iowa code still still is still it, gives direction effect. of the compensation yeah, board. I printed it out. Okay. I don't think it. I think the only difference is after the fact, after they get the recommendation, it changes our ability instead of having to draw them all down equally. The major change would be that we can. Right. I'm just happy. I I agree with you 100. percent I'm glad that now we have the capability in, in my would be scenario if you know before you always had to treat everybody the same so if you had one elected official that was right. 
higher paid in the rankings and you're like, I wanted to bring that one down. Or I don't want to give that one as much. I'm stuck. I can't. Well, you got to do that. Trigger, auditor, whatever that's ranked. 80 of. Right. And then you got supervisors that are ranked number one. Right. In the state ranking. Exactly. We need to fix that. We right. need to fix that. Right. But you can't have everybody but try to judge. Prior, so, you could not do that. Yeah, right. Without. Right. Everybody get hurt right. by trying right. to take one. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's very difficult. I remember my first meeting trying to and and the comm board now has that ability too. Yeah. Right. Yes. I think they've always had that ability. They're going to sure. yeah. they right. they yeah, they 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 have always had the ability mm -hmm. to do that. Carroll County, uh, a couple of years back, it was and I'm not but it was the auditor, the treasurer, yep. attorney. Oh, okay. They How come they never did that? Because it was always exactly the same. They just didn't they want to do everything fair, everything yeah. okay. That's all right. So the comm board did have that ability. I do. I do okay. know well, a few years back and why that happened. Sheriff got a higher increase. Remember that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. Not just we got the back blue, but before that. Right. They were they recognized that disparity years ago. The sheriff they thought was less than so I mean they were trying to do it incrementally, bring the sheriff up to a wage that was more comparable. And you know, when I first got on it, the gym got like five percent or something at the time, and the rest of the elected officials got three or well, something like that. But before so the they always have that option. The compensation board can be in and they all have to move it, all the races that they were okay. and get, you know, I mean, historically looking back, the sheriff was always the highest paid elected official in the county. For many, many years. You prior to us having always a full-time attorney. Yes, prior to us having a full-time attorney. And once that came up, I'll be exactly. right. So, okay. If we approve this today, are we approving this with that sample, using that well, sample? You know, I mean, you got to I mean, set terms of the offices. Have you? Right. I mean, I don't know. Have you all looked at the resolution? I have. No, I, I, I have. I don't want to put it back on the I have. No, I just want to get a copy of this yeah. resolution or read through the copy. Yeah. And, and this. You know, I was surprised that it was to take action because well, I think she gives us the ability. Yeah. 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 yeah, we don't have to. We no, just I have the option. Yeah, it was on the last time to take Correct. action also, Correct. I believe. All right. So we've had the discussion. It seems like. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll have Terry email us all the resolution. And we can put it back on the agenda. It's in that ISAC. Uh, the I'm, ISAC email that came yeah, out. I had it. The resolution's in there. So we listen for that. Yep. I, I could find it here. I printed it so that I could. I must have thrown it out. Yeah, I'm sure I got that. All of that. Right, just skim through it. Read it right. like I. Yeah, yes, sure. yeah, I did see it on there until this. Well, if, either way, we can all take a week, copy read it. If we have any yeah. questions about yeah. it, talk to people like we always do, and uh, put it on the agenda for. So if we make the motion, people don't call you as you're and walking it, out. Of the and in case you're you're curious, the sheriff's salary in 1892 was three hundred dollars a month. Well, Whoa, I love that. All right, very good work the auditor made. Which which uh <laughs> which in today's dollars would today, be twelve thousand five hundred dollars okay. a year. Sounds, Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you. All righty. So we'll have that back on the agenda. Uh citizens input. Uh we've got some folks out on Zoom. Is it uh Bonnie? Got your hand up? We all heard. Bonnie, you have your hand up? Unmuted. There. Yeah, there Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes. Um, good morning. I uh, got on the Zoom a little late, and I didn't hear all of what Craig said about the uh, <clears throat> IUB order, but I just wanted to bring a couple things to your attention. Uh, one is that uh, the Utilities Commission, it's the IUC now, uh, did not grant a permit to summit they granted them a conditional permit and they have uh, several hoops they have to jump through yet. And one of them, the main one is they cannot begin construction until they have permits in the Dakota, in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota and, Nor and Nebraska. Um, <clears throat> and the big one is South Dakota because uh, their first permit was denied and they have not even filed an application for the for a new hearing on a permit. And that's gonna take at least a year. So there's that. 
And uh, then there are other regulations that they have to uh, meet and they have to meet uh, all the water, uh, their water needs, which is tremendous. And um, we'll see how that works out. Uh, also, uh, yesterday <clears throat> was the deadline for groups to um, file re for reconsideration with the Utilities Commission. And several groups, including our group, the Jordy Landowners, have filed for reconsideration with the board uh, based on the fact that our attorneys, several attorneys for the counties, um, the Sierra Club, various landowners, have all uh, found legal problems with the utility board ruling and they've asked for reconsideration. And that's gonna take, I don't know, a month or so to work through that. And if de denied, then this, then we start the appeal process in the courts. And that starts with uh, the district courts, the state Supreme Court if necessary, and maybe even the United States Supreme Court. So um, what I'm trying to say here is that this is far from over. If anybody thinks it's a done deal, it is not. It's an ongoing battle. And I just wanted to make that clear to the board. That's all. Thank you. Bonnie, thank Thanks, you. Bonnie. Thanks, Bonnie. For the update. Yep. Very good. You know, I kind of knew those. So anybody else in our citizen input? Cindy, got your hand up. Yeah, you were talking about the ordinance that Robert sent to you that you're going to send to Colin. I just wanted to say that it, it's fine to put that in place, but all the survey work for Crawford County has been completed already. So that ordinance really wouldn't help Crawford right now. But as far as the future, it wouldn't hurt to put something like that in place because if this pipeline does go through, we will now be a pipeline corridor. That's pretty well known that they will just put more and more pipelines going through Crawford. So that's something to think about. But I was wondering where you're at as far as the resolution on the intimate domain um, goes. I, I The last I heard, I thought it was with Colin. Any updates on that? We haven't talked to Colin to see, because uh, we did, let me look here and see. If Cindy, I the uh -huh. question, the resolution in regards to the survey, and I mean, they came out and did preliminary surveying through the tracks, but once construction would begin, then surveyors would have to come back again and do the alignment of those pipelines. And I think that's how I understood this resolution would help control or at least let you as a landowner know that you have people out there putting stakes in. I, I guess that's what I deem this survey resolution to help with. I could be wrong. That's why I wanted to get it to Colin and have him uh, see if it's even worth setting up. Because, I mean, there's always going to have to be somebody out there making sure they're going where they're supposed to be going. Well, exactly. And that would be part of the inspector's job as far as that way. The surveys, what, what Summit has done is more like the cultural survey to make sure there's no artifacts, things like that. That those There's four surveys that they did previous to they had to do that for the IUC. So those are have been completed. But what you're talking about, I agree. I mean it's it's you can call them survey or you can just at that point it's right. some this is different inspectors. Right. Uh, the the surveyors are the guys that are standing out there and look through them little scopes and they tell the guy go six inches that way or whatever. That that's what I'm envisioning. They're gonna have to receive written permission from the landowner stating the exact time and date of the survey activities will occur and which parcels of land are to be surveyed, including in handwritten signature of approval from landowners. So uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're what you're saying, but I talked to Robert and this ordinance, what they're talking about was basically constructed for the phase two landowners. We're working with those counties right now that are just starting the process. They have no idea about their rights for surveys. So that's what this one was kind of entailed to, but I like where Kyle's going as far as the more things we can have in place, the better off we all are as far as it's protection. It's not gonna stop anything, Cindy. It's just letting you as a landowner know that, hey, I got these guys, this crew's out here working on my property. I mean, right, I, well, I, we think, can... I think they should come up and knock on your door anyway, but. 
to me, this resolution would just say, hey, got to go talk to Cindy and let them know that we're going to be out here setting some stakes out through here. So, And since it appears they didn't do it previously, it would be nice to make sure that the understanding of Crawford County is we expect that. Right. My thought, but here again, I want it vetted by Colin because it seems like every time we come up with something, you know, the IUB or the federal government or whatever supersedes anything we could try. So, certainly looks that uh, way, un unfortunately. But thank, uh, thanks for your input. And I, as far as the resolution that you were talking about, is that just to kind of reiterate that we're against imminent domain that resolution. The one similar to what Shelby County passed. Exactly. Um, it's a lot more thorough than than what you guys passed originally. It has, you know, different uh, legal cases cited in the resolution. It would just help our case further down in the legal courts. So even though we're just and I'm not I'm trying to understand, I don't I don't mean any disrespect, Cindy. It just we we initially stated our case that we're against eminent domain so we're just gonna you you would like to see a formal resolution restating that yes it's a lot more thorough what you did is kind of like a generic versus a very specified or i mean objection yours your what you put in originally was just very very generic it was good i mean it got the point across but this one is a lot more thorough and it it tells the courts why intimate domain is so, wrong. So since, since the IUB or IUC has already ruled, what do you see the point of saying, I don't agree with that when we didn't agree with it before? Because this is going to be for our further legal battles when we get into a fair so court. So it'd be, it'd be just to help the people that are continuing to battle the lawsuit to to appeal the lawsuit or the decision by the IUC just to correct help those and in the in the future too I mean this is not just just for this one but it would also be for future cases for intimate domain it brings up uh, all of the other cases in the United States Supreme Court uh, and all sorts of different ones so if we do that exact one is that Colin has this yeah yeah we'll we'll check with him and see okay you know, I'll, yeah, I'll go uh, when I get done with this and see where yeah, it's at. With the, the board's Maddie. always been against the eminent domain aspect. And exactly. That's why I kind of thought this resolution would be a piece of cake to go through because I, you guys have so firm on the intimate yeah. domain side of things. We will seek legal advice. And if this. we can do anything to help down the road, it's it's something we must do. So I will see where he's at with it because he does have this. So uh, see if that gets on the agenda for next week, hopefully. Great, thank you. You're welcome, Cindy. All right, uh, we just have Vicki and Michelle left on uh, citizens' input. We have no one else in here, so. Sherry, you got anything? All right, all right. So the next thing is the adjournment on our agenda. Will we adjourn? Second. Any objections? All right. Don't forget tomorrow. We're grilling at the fair. 10 o'clock. That's gonna be nice and cool, so that'll be fun. And then on so Thursday, I have to call Bingo, you to call what you did. the senior right. citizens. I did yeah. just email all on the comp board. I got an email you too. So. Yep, I got it. And I just said to just have Colin just look at it. So that's right. That's right. I think it's pretty straight. So yeah. wants to add. Yep. Well, that's good. What's that? Well, yeah. Didn't reinvent the wheel then. So, all right. Dry. We've been adjourned. Holy smokes. Yeah. Not yeah. even 11 o'clock. All righty. Well, I was afraid it was going to come to the yeah, because they were getting you every morning. Yep. Yep. I said, if I was open, you would just still pipe, pipe some water over to, hey, there was something I wanted. What are you doing, Thursday?